before I start today's Retro Hub setup guide for Windows PC, if you like what you see, stay hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. So we're looking at Retro Hub today and this is a front end system or a launcher system that I've not yet actually covered and it's surprisingly really good. So what we can do first of all is download the actual package itself. So as we can see from the official website, this is available for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. So I'm going to download the Windows version for this setup guide and I'm going to download the 64-bit version. Now you're going to notice just here we got two versions. We got 32 bits and 64 bits. If you're not sure which one to go for, what I normally suggest doing is just open up your search bar and typing in system information. Go into system information and under system type, you'll see that I've got times 64, which tells me I need the 64 bit download. If you've got a 32 bit computer, it will likely say times 86. So I'm going to download the 64 bit version of this. Okay, so we've down downloaded this and I've got a zip folder. This is Retro Hub. If we just open this one up, you're going to find lots of contents inside and there's also an emulators folder. What I'm going to do is create a new folder on my desktop. So right click, new folder and just call this Retro Hub. It doesn't really matter. But what we're aiming to do is just extract all those contents into that folder. So if I press Control and A, I'm going to highlight everything and just drag and drop everything into that Retro Hub folder. And that's it. So the next thing we need to do is just go inside and I'm going to suggest actually making a shortcut of Retro Hub. This is the file we need to open up the launcher itself. If I right click on this, show more options, send to desktop create shortcut. And as you can see on my desktop, we've now got Retro Hub just there rather than going into that folder every time. I'm also going to delete the Retro Hub zip folder. We no longer need that one and just clean this up. So what we're going to do first of all is actually put some emulators inside of that Retro Hub folder. As we noticed just a minute ago, we got an emulators folder just here. Now for this setup guide, I'm going to get you up and running with Super Nintendo, Nintendo NES and finally PlayStation. So I've downloaded SNES 9X and here's the emulator content. So inside of that emulators folder, right click new folder and I'm just going to call this folder SNES. If I go back to that SNES 9x zip folder, again, Control and A to highlight everything, and drag and drop it into that SNES folder. And that's now done. So I'm gonna just delete these as I go along. So no longer need the zip folder for SNES 9x. Next thing I'm gonna do is create another folder and call this one NES. And of course, this one is going to be for NES Topia, which is a very good Nintendo NES emulator. So again, just drag and drop those contents inside of there. So those two systems are fairly simple to set up. And then we come to PlayStation. So finally, I'm gonna just call this one PSX. If I then go in there, open up Duck Station and drag all of those contents inside. And that's it. So we're now done with the emulation side of things. And what we're going to do is open up Retro Hub for the first time. So if I double left click on the shortcut. And you'll likely see Windows protected your PC. Just go to more info and run anyway. To enable the screen reader, press the control key. Okay, so this is Retro Hub, and what we're going to see first of all is the welcome screen. So we can actually enable screen reader here. If you want this, then just enable. I'm going to disable this and go to let's go. Uh, next thing we need to do is determine the region of how we want our games displayed. So for example, if I put this down to Europe, we'll see that all the system names are now changed to the European names, where if I put it at something like USA, We'll notice that Sega Mega Drive is now turned to Sega Genesis and so for the other systems just there. So anyways, obviously I'm in Europe and we've even got the rating system here, which is for Europe, Peggy. Uh, I can change that if I want, but of course I want to make this look as authentic for European games as possible. So I'm going to go to next once I've done that. 
And the next thing we're going to see is if you have any existing retro gaming library set up, you may be able to import it. I don't have anything at the moment for this setup guide, so I'm going to go to next. Next thing we're going to do is actually give a path for games to go in. So as we can see just here, it's given us a default path of in my computer's main folder, which is Jamie. I don't want it to go in there. I actually want this to go in my folder on my desktop. So I'm going to go to choose directory. And from here, what I'm going to do is literally just select the folder. So this is the desktop retro hub folder. If I select current folder, what this is going to do is generate lots of different folders, each one of them where we're going to put our games into in a minute. If I go to next, next thing we need to do is tell retro hub what systems we want to use. Now, the thing I'm going to do with this for now is just go to consoles and I'm going to go to consoles on the right side panel and just select NES. And just remember, you can always go back to this menu that I'm in now later on. I'm also going to choose SNES and I've also got Sony PlayStation, which is PSX. If I go to next next screen you're going to see is that obviously retro hub is a gaming library front end so it doesn't come with any emulators and that's why just a minute ago i put my emulators into that emulator folder we're just going to go to next for this finally it's now say we can add games and it's also telling us that the escape button on the keyboard opens up the menu so anyways let's go to let's go so here we go this is it now if i press escape button as you can see, I've now got the menu, and if you want to go back to that initial setup process, we can actually go to general and just go to rerun first time wizard, and that will take us right back to the start. Anyways, what we're going to do then is quit out of Retro Hub, is we got to put some games in some folders, so if I go to quit, quit Retro Hub. Okay, now if I go to the Retro Hub folder again, we're going to notice we got some more folders in here, and this is where our games are going to go. So I've just selected through the setup process, I wanted NES. I also want PSX and SNES. So if I go to my NES folder first, this is where our games are going to go. So in my NES folder, I've got a few games there, all in .zip. If I just drag and drop. And next up, my PSX folder. So I've got some PS1 games, and I'm going to just drag and drop those .chd games inside. And finally, we got SNES. And again, in my SNES folder, I've got several games there, all in .zip. And that's about it. So what we need to do first is connect all of this up with Retro Hub itself. So if we open it up again... And as you can see, the games are now displayed. There's actually no artwork, and we can do this very simple. So if I press Escape to bring up that menu, this time I'm going to go to Scraper. And what we can do just here is actually enable Use Custom Account. If you could head over to Screen Scraper and sign up, which is free, you can then enable Custom Account. Just pop in your username and your password, and you've got some more options. If we just slide this down, you're going to have the options there to download or scrape rather title screen preview videos that type of thing and also you'll notice at the bottom games to scrape one game selected what i'm going to do is just go down to all 16 games selected in total so if i hit on scrape now now as you can see it's now scraping our artwork starting off with super nintendo so we're just going to wait for this Okay, and as we can see, everything's been scraped, but the PlayStation games haven't been scraped. It's got no information for the PlayStation games. If I just click on one of these, what I'm actually going to do is go over to the other side and just delete or backspace everything as you see. If I then go to search, and there we go. So we can edit the game's name, and that's going to do that for us. If I do the same with the crow game if I just click on it go over to the other side and I'm gonna take away Europe and I'm also gonna take away City of Angels if I just go to search and there we go so I'm gonna just go through that process with the other games I've got 
And for this particular game, I've got several options here. So I'm going to use Crash Bandicoot. As you can see, I've got the first one. And there we go. So everything's now scraped. If I go to finish, and I'm going to just close this down by pressing Escape. As we can see in Retro Hub, we've got artwork and preview videos. You'll also notice on the left-hand side, we can also select by system. So Super Nintendo, it's going to take us down to Super Nintendo. PlayStation, to PlayStation, and so on. So obviously, the more systems you add, the longer that list is going to become. Okay, so next up, I've just connected to my Xbox controller via Bluetooth, and it's actually working well. I've not need to configure it, and the front end itself is working just fine. But as you can see, moving around, no problems. What we need to do next is try and open up a game. So I'm going to go for Pac-Man. And as you've seen just there, it's asking us to set up the emulator. So obviously we need to configure this too. So what we're going to do to do this is press escape button. And from here, we're just going to scroll down on the side. And we're firstly going to go to emulators. And right at the top, we're going to find 4DO. So we're going to scroll this down. And the first one I'm going to add is the Nintendo NES, NES Topia. So if I just scroll down, and we'll find NES Topia just here. If I click on this. Next thing I need to do with this is just go to path and I'm going to go to the load button just here. What I need to do is connect this or link it up to where I've just put the emulator, which is in the Retro Hub emulator folder, which I did earlier in this setup guide. So once we're in the Retro and Files, I'm going to need to go to Users. And if I go to Jamie, from here, I can actually go to my desktop location. And here we're going to find Retro Hub. If I just scroll down, here's Retro Hub. Here's my emulators folder, my NES folder. And I'm going to double left click on the nestopia.exe. And here we go. So I've now done that. What I need to do next is actually test if this is working, if it's set up. So if I go to launch. And there we go. As we can see, I've used the front end itself to actually open up Nestopia, And it's actually done that. So I can close this down and just exit Nestopia, And I'm also going to go up to the top to save changes. Once that's done, if I press escape to exit this menu, I'm then going to open up Pac-Man again. And here we go. So it's working just fine. But obviously, we need to configure the emulator to boot up into, say, a full screen. So we need to do this outside of Retro Hub. Remember, Retro Hub, just like any other front-end launcher, is there for the glossy side of things. So we can actually do this from here, or we can close Retro Hub down and work on Nestopia emulator outside of Retro Hub. What I'm going to do for now is just go to full screen. So full screen's now enabled, but my controller isn't working. So I'm going to just close down Nestopia. And it's actually telling us just here I can actually kill the emulator process by holding the escape button. Here we go. So the emulator is absolutely closed down. And what I'm going to do for now is just close out a retro hub. So just press escape. And then right at the top, I'm going to just screw up using my D-pad to quit. And then quit retro hub. Now, this time, I need to obviously configure my controller within the NES emulator, which I've just added to Retro Hub. So, if I go to Retro Hub folder or directory, emulators, NES, if I open up NES Topia, and from here, I can then go to options, input, and I can then configure my controller. So, once we open up a NES game, the controller is going to work. So, joysticks, I've got Bluetooth just here, that's fine. And if I go to mapping, I can then press up on my D-pad and map that out for my Xbox controller. Okay, so what we're going to do first then, once that's all done, is open up Retro Hub again. I'm going to go down to my library section. This time I'm going to open up, say, Gremlins.
And what I've done to exit that game, I'm using the start button on my Xbox controller and that acts as a hotkey and that's just brought me back into Retro Hub. Okay, so next up, we're going to add the next system. So I'm going to be adding Super Nintendo. So obviously press escape on your keyboard and that's going to bring the main menu back up. If we go to systems, I'm going to just go to the top and I'm going to scroll down until I come across Super Nintendo Entertainment System. If I just click on this one, and there we go. So what we've got just here is a list of different support emulators for this. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm then going to go to the emulator section. And from here, I'm going to just drop down the top and I'm going to look for SNES 9X. Here's SNES 9X. The name of this, I'm going to need this SNES 9X. Uh, next thing we need to do is enter the emulator's path. So just like Nintendo NES or NEStopia, go to load. And from here, it's just then a case of navigating to that emulator folder. So again, we're going to go to users, Jamie in my case, desktop. And we're going to look for the Retro Hub folder. Here it is. And emulators, SNES, and double left click on the emulator executable. And here we go. So everything looks like it's set up. Now, if we just go to launch to test, here we go. So we can now close down, and if I just go up to the top to save changes, and then press escape to exit, this time I'm going to go down to my SNES library and attempt to open up one of my favourite games, which is Bubsy. And here we go, so everything's working fine, and again we will need to set up the controls in video display through the emulator itself. So if I go to input on SNES 9X, input configuration, what I'm going to do is just define or map my controller. And once that's done, I'm going to go to OK. And if I go to video, I can then either set this to open every time I open up the emulator in full screen mode. But for this, I'm going to just go to full screen. What could possibly go wrong? And what I'm going to do is actually get this emulator to boot up on full screen. So what I'm going to do is just go display settings, full screen on ROM open, OK. If I then exit out the game, I'm then going to open up a Super Nintendo game, which should then launch directly into the SNES 9X of a full screen. So if I go for Mr. Nuts... Now to exit the game, once again, I press the start button. I've held that start button down for a good few seconds. Like I say, start button or escape button acts as a hotkey in Retro Hub. So finally, we've got some bit more advanced to add, but not necessarily that difficult to set up. So this is going to be for the PlayStation Duck Station emulator. So what we're going to do first is actually exit out of Retro Hub. And we need to set this up, so I'm going to go into the Retro Hub folder, into the Emulators folder, into my PSX folder, and I'm going to open up Duck Station from here. More info, run anyway. And I'm just going to go through the normal process of setting up Duck Station. And obviously we need BIOS for this, so what I'm going to do is just select the directory where my BIOS files are for this. Now I'm also going to add my game directory into Duck Station like it's asking for. So if I just quickly do this by going to add. And then I obviously need to go back to my Retro Hub folder for this. So simply go to desktop. And from here I'm going to scroll down to Retro Hub. And here's my PSX folder. Select folder. And I'm going to just press yes on this part. And here we go. Go to next. And we can actually choose automatic mapping just here for my Xbox controller. I'm going to go to next and finally finish. And here we go. So I've got Duck Station set up now. Uh, one final thing we do need to do actually is get this emulator to boot up through Retro Hub in full screen mode. So I'm going to go to settings. And then if I drop down to graphics. And on interface I'm going to go to start full screen. This is going to boot up. 
duck station through retro hub in full screen mode rather than windowed so once i've done that i can then close out a duck station and if i then go into retro hub again okay so again i'm going to press escape and this time i'm going to go down to systems and at the top it's just a process now of finding sony playstation so we got PSX, Sony, PlayStation, and right at the bottom here, it's going to tell us which emulators it recommends. Obviously, Duck Station is here. It's a very popular emulator. If I then go to emulators beneath it, again, I'm going to drop the top down, and I'm going to scroll down until I come across Duck Station. Here's Duck Station, if I select that one. And again, finally, I need to link up the path of the executable for this. So I'm going to go to load users and system folder name desktop and retro hub and into my emulators folder psx folder and duck station if i just go to launch here we go it now launches fine so if i close out and what i'm going to do is just go to save changes press escape now in my library i'm obviously going to look for playstation games so i'm going to try and boot up one of these i'm going to go for epidemic Okay, so that's PlayStation also up and running. So a couple more things we can do with Retro Hub is by going into the main menu. Remember, that's going to be your escape button. If we just go down to integrations, we can actually enable retro achievements. So just like Screen Scraper, retro achievements is absolutely free. And it just means that for particular retro games, you'll enable retro points to score retro points. And you can compete against other retro gamers. So like I say, absolutely free. You can actually open the website from the front end itself. Just make sure this is enabled and then put your username and your key inside and you're good to go with that. Uh, something else we can do is by going to general, we can actually go down to change bits and pieces such as V-Sync enabling, uh, render resolution. So there's plenty of options there for video settings. And we've also got the option here under the general section for changing themes. So as we can see, this is currently on default. Now, I've tried this already, ES or Emulation Station Theme Wrapper. If we enable this, it's going to tell you that it's actually got a bug in it. So you can enable this, but you're not going to see too much. However, if I go to OK, what we need to do is actually close out of this. So if I go to Quit, Quit Retro Hub, let's just launch it again. Okay, and this is exactly what the devs of Retro Hub are telling us. It's very much broken. So, um, for now, until a new stable release comes out, maybe you're not going to get too far with the emulation station theme. So, just remember that's in general, and I'm going to set the theme back to default and okay. And what we need to do next then is actually take a look at a folder. So, we're going to quit quit retro hub now when you've put this into your retro hub folder wherever your location is where this is going we're also going to create another folder and the other folder has got very important text documents in it which you can edit now to find the folder i'm talking about what we're going to do is go to c drive in my case it's going to be in my jamie folder and from here we're going to find a folder retro hub and here we go. So in Retro Hub, we got a themes folder. So obviously you can drag and drop themes into this folder and then use them in Retro Hub itself. Other things we've got here, which might interest some people, is emulator paths and config. These are .jsons. If I open this up with Notepad, we can actually edit just here different things for locations and paths, that type of thing. 
Okay, so that's it for today's Retro Hub setup, guys. So if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like. Also, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you liked this particular front, then just give us a comment below and let us know what you think of Retro Hub and if you want subsequent setup, guys, for setting up different systems with it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Till next time, stay retro.